What do you think doctors should be aware of when it comes to LBD? One is just recognizing the core features of uh, uh, LBD, and this information is on the LBDA uh, website, uh, but knowing the dementia syndrome. And when you see an individual, often it's just the gestalt is different from uh, those that have more typical Alzheimer's disease. And uh, uh, clinicians who have been in practice some time, they often get the sense, this isn't quite typical of what I often see, and that hunch may be quite important. Um, but the presence of visual hallucinations, some degree of Parkinsonism, uh, if they spontaneously report the fluctuations in cognition or arousal or the simple question to ask that uh, uh, and get a sense from uh, the patient and family. And then is there a history of acting out dreams, even if it was uh, uh, many, many years ago? Um, the core features, it really takes a minute or less to ask about them. So it can be done in a uh, primary care uh, physician's office. Um, it is, because of the complexity of the uh, disorder though, if those are recognized, the, uh, the um, suspicion is raised, it is worthwhile to involve either uh, a neurologist or a psychiatrist, somebody with clinical experience, um, and that's gonna depend on the region where the, the uh, person lives or the uh, clinician is practicing, but um, there's often benefits to a referral. Um, but those uh, features, uh, uh, the sleep disorder, the fluctuations, the Parkinsonism, the visual hallucinations, and this hunch that things are just a bit different from typical Alzheimer's disease uh, uh, can uh, be gleaned usually within a minute. What imaging tests are helpful in diagnosing LBD? There are several imaging studies to consider. Uh, first one is readily available MRI. Uh, so usually MRIs look pretty normal, especially to the trained eye, normal normal. So the hippocampi, which is the, the part uh, of the brain that's involved with making new memories that tends to become atrophic in people with Alzheimer's disease. If that looks uh, uh, plump hippocampi, uh, then that's, uh, uh, that supports uh, a Lewy body um, uh, dementia diagnosis. Um, other uh, scans, um, these are harder to perform, uh, both in terms of availability and expense, but a glucose PET scan or fluorodeoxyglucose FDG PET scan, uh, those scans tend to show uh, posterior hypometabolism, so the parieto-occipital, especially the occipital uh, region, and there's one particular thing that a trained eye will look for, the posterior cingulate island sign is uh, quite helpful for uh, ruling in, ruling out, um, ruling in, ruling out in relative terms. Um, these are all indirect uh, uh, supporters of the diagnosis. Uh, Another uh, uh, important uh, scan is a DAT scan. Uh, that's the, the trade name for it, or Ioflupane SPECT scan, but it goes by DAT scan. A DAT scan, if it's abnormal, is uh, in the right clinical setting, is strongly uh, suggestive of uh, Lewy body disease, uh, causing that person's dementia syndrome. A normal DAT scan doesn't exclude Lewy body disease, but it makes it less likely. Uh, and then there's some other scans that are um, really still in a research phase, uh, tau PET imaging. Amyloid PET imaging uh, is available clinically and uh, fairly widespread uh, use in research. This is important probably for uh, prognosis, how will this person evolve and how quickly, because if the amyloid PET scan is positive, that suggests likely coexisting Alzheimer changes in the brain, and so that can be a more severe, a more rapid course. Um, that's not proven either, but that's the uh, hypothesis. Um, if it's negative, that strongly suggests there uh, is no significant Alzheimer pathology. Uh, so, so MRI, FDG, or glucose PET scan, DAT scan, and then amyloid PET and tau PET. Um, uh, multimodal imaging, that's really the, 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 the view by a lot of researchers now. No single test tells you everything you want to know, and combinations of findings can be really helpful. 
Uh, so those are the imaging studies. We don't have any imaging studies yet that images the Lewy body or Lewy neurites or the alpha-synuclein protein, which is the, the guilty protein most experts uh, feel. There's a lot of work in this area, but we don't have that type of uh, PET, uh, uh, PET scan yet. What guidance do you have for physicians when it comes to treating behavioral symptoms? The first issue is what are the behaviors that are viewed bothersome? Uh, so what are the target behaviors? Uh, so trying to be clear with the patient and family, is it visual hallucinations, is it delusions, is it agitation, anxiety, or a combination of those? So know what the targets are. Then to realize uh, most of those uh, behaviors or experiences is a form of communication. So if, for example, agitation, the person is trying to tell us something and try to get at the root of this. So is there a medical problem, pain, uh, infection? Uh, so get to the heart of the matter from a, a, a medical standpoint. Um, and then if you can understand what the, uh, the substrate uh, is, whether it's a medical explanation or the uh, disease itself, are there non-medication approaches first? For example, with visual hallucinations, you don't need to treat every individual that has hallucinations. Will redirection uh, work? Um, is it more bothersome to the family member than to the individual? Um, if the individual is clearly bothered by the experiences and they're developing thoughts or delusions around the hallucinations, then you want to intervene, again, non-pharmacologically first, uh, but if those measures don't work, then to consider uh, treatments. And uh, the cholinesterase inhibitors are far safer than any uh, or most of the other uh, medications we consider. We always go with those uh, first. Uh, if they're not as effective or if a person's already using one of them, uh, then we consider some of these other uh, agents. And, uh, so the atypical neuroleptics are uh, ones that uh, um, uh, we, uh, we do use. Uh, we go through this thought process before we even get to that juncture. Uh, first, make sure it's safe. And uh, so should they have an electrocardiogram? Look at their, uh, what their QTC interval is, which is a measure of a certain uh, part of the electrical conduction. Is that class even safe? Uh, and so it's pretty standard nowadays that an ECG is done before one of those medications are, are used. Some medications have more side effects, um, others less so, um, and that discussion should really happen with the individual physician. Uh, there are some no-no medicines, Haldol, Thorazine, Melaril, Stelazine, the old um, uh, classic neuroleptics we really try to avoid uh, ever using. Um, some clinicians actually label people allergic to them so they never will be exposed uh, uh, to them in the future. Uh, and then the atypical neuroleptics uh, uh, are um, uh, often used, especially a couple are uh, used more often than not. But uh, um, it's that sequence of uh, thinking and discussion with the family before a medicine is used. <laughs>